What's up, y'all? I got a banger from Horizon. Let's get straight into it. The DNA test results show Uh that Mr. Smith, you are not. She's a runner. She's a track star. Monica's father. We're from five to 30 percent of the general population. Men are raising and paying for children that are not theirs and Mm. don't know. According to the American Association of Blood Banks, between 25 and 30 percent of the males who are accused of being the father, they take a paternity test and find out they did not do it. Mm. Are you for mandatory DNA testing at birth? I am absolutely on record at saying that if we want to prevent the problem of yes. having men challenge paternity later down the road, is then let's, let's apply a proactive solution. Facts. Automatic DNA testing at birth mm-hmm. would work to help two things. One, we would assure that the right parents were named on the birth certificate. Yep. Two, it would stop paternity fraud and take the profit out of paternity fraud. So- Let me know what you guys think. Do you think that they should make paternity testing mandatory by law at birth? Personally, I think so. To this man's point. And also, sparing good men the grief of having to raise a child and then finding out it's not theirs. Can you imagine being there for a child, raising them until they're four or five, even six years old, and finding out one day that they are not your kid and the chick that you're with is just straight up. She's a runner. She's a track star. That would be absolutely brutal. Like, think about the mental anguish a man would have to go through. That'd be, ugh, that'd be awful. Don't wish that on any man. We should just make it mandatory. So many women's groups say this wouldn't be fair. You're acting like you don't trust the mother. Why do you think they say that? Stupid. It's a red herring. Yeah. It, it is. It, it takes away from the focus of well, who's the one person who has all of the information about potential fathers or the paternity candidates? Mamas. It is the child's mother. And because all it's doing is making more women. See, it's just making a bunch of single moms. Like we need to stop that in most places she has no duty to disclose that well wait a minute well my husband's not really the, my child's father my boyfriend is like well wait 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 lady but really? you're married you forgot that you were married <laughs> no what the fuck is it Darius is not my motherfucking kid took paternity test and found out his three year old son who's named after him is not oh brutal uh, yeah yeah what are you what is Th- it that's a motherfucking DNA test Okay. Why did you take a DNA test? I took a fucking DNA test because you know the- From where? Why are you what the a- fuck is that, Emery, bitch? Yeah. Why are you taking a DNA test? Because my sister told my Your ass, sister, yeah. your nosy ass sister. You're, fuck, she was right? She be lying. Reflection of accountability. Are we surprised, gents? Are we surprised that this woman isn't taking any accountability for this? She spread her legs for another man and still is trying to shame him. Why would you take that? Why would you listen to your sister? <laughs> your sister's your savior in this regard. Fucking right here, yeah, but you be lying out. What the fuck is... All right. Why would you name our child Darius? It's not it's our child. Son. It's not even our child. No, it's not my son. Yes, you've no. been raising him for three years. You have been raising him. You know that was somebody else's child. You uh, know that was somebody who, who the fuck he was family. fucking? He even looks like family. You know, he looks like fucking family. Bitch. Why have you. He said- looks like you. <laughs> <laughs> just straight up, just. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Out there and let me raise. Got my last name. Oh. Are you fucking okay. kidding me? All right, all right. During the time that we had a break, it was uh, one time. All right, oh. we were going through stuff, and that's it. Oh, okay, one time. I didn't so think anything. You, uh, you, you, so you, you just don't have me raising somebody else. You didn't think anything of it, but you sure didn't let him bust in those guts. Shots fired! Shots fired! Sure did think of that. Oh, shit. Oh, so we do, uh, what time? What the that's fuck? That's, no, 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 no. no, that's not my motherfucking blood? child. You've been fucking somebody else. Hey, that's why, somebody else's fucking child. Why is your sister telling you to do that anyway? You don't know because the fuck. It's not my motherfucking child. Because your sister, his sister has his best interest in mind. I mean, this is absolutely unreal. He's not, he's not our blood. He's not our blood. Him. No, that's your child. That's your child. That's, you and your child need to get the fuck child. out. Is what the fuck need to happen. Get out. Get the where, fuck where out. Where are we going to go? Gonna, I don't give a fuck. Go, go. You're going to kick me and your child yeah, That's not my motherfucking child. That is not my baby. That is not my baby. <laughs> that's brutal, bro. 30%. That's 30%? Wait, wait, wait. Run that all... back, Turbo. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah, okay. 30%. That's 30% of all men who go to actually get paternity tested turn out to not be the father. 
So out of thirty percent, three out of ten. I'm actually kind of surprised. That's a lot. Three hundred thirty of those will not be the dad. Mm. Mm-mm. My ex-boyfriend told me that, married or not, if I ever had his baby, that he would want a DNA test before he would accept that child as his own. When he told me that, I was like, what? It honestly pissed me off. We got into it. I was telling him how he made it seem like he didn't trust me and all these different things. And he was saying, no, that's not it. You don't understand because you're a woman and you would never have to question if that child is yours or not once you have it. Thanks. Even if you trust someone, mm-hmm. you could still have that small percentage of a chance that that child is truly not yours Mm -hmm. and then he was saying how if it truly is my child then what is the issue because it's going to come back positive and all will be well yeah and even after it's kind of with the whole prenup conversation well it's like well if you trusted me then you wouldn't need that and if you trusted me it wouldn't happen i remember back in my day when a good old woman would only spread her legs for one man she wouldn't go around being a hussy, split tail, and floozy and all around. What happened to the good old days, man? Now you got to get a paternity test, and it's like, it's sad, but it's a harsh reality. And, and gents, I'd say if you haven't done it and you have kids, you should do it. For those arguments, I still felt icky about it. Even though I didn't like it, did. I did agree to it because I felt like for him, it was a level of protection, and it would just validate. Did she steal her grandma's glasses? Shots fired! Shots fired! What are those? They ate things for him. It's also like when people talk about prenups, some people will say that they will not do a prenup because that's people betting on the marriage to fail Mm -hmm. or people going into it with the wrong intentions, which I don't think it's that. I think that at the end of the day, a prenup is protection. It's a guarantee that no matter what happens, that both parties will be okay. And I think that if we truly do love people, that we would want to put ourselves and them in positions where they can be validated, they can be protected, no matter how things go. Because you know what? No. You're going to stay with her, right? You're going to stay with her? Right yes, I am. Okay, Molly gives her son, daughter, a DNA and a... Uh, ooh, yeah. goodness. Well, what? No. What? For telling the truth? She done lost your whole mind. Oh, my. Listen. It's okay. You don't think I'm disappointed? You don't think I'm disappointed that that ain't my grandchild? You don't think I'm disappointed that you picked that and I've been up here giving up my money and my time? I have things I could have been doing. You never like from day Just admit that. Anybody but that. Anybody. Body, but her. Yes, no, I didn't like her. Wait, wait, wait. Is this guy really getting on his mom's case? Bro, you're a grown man. This is why I say he's man children. You got to go out there and take accountability. You know what? You'd be like, you know what? I wifed up the wrong chick. I shouldn't have talked to her. Shouldn't have wifed her up. And keep it pushing. Why are you bringing your mom into this? This is so, like, this is beta energy, bro. No. Else, other things. Oh, you talk I about see. accountability, but you can't say it. Talk about the real reason why you never want to so, be up. it's my fault. Sasha has nothing to do with this. Everything that you've been doing lately is because of your vendetta with Sasha. That has nothing to oh, do with the truth. I see. So what I did was I made sure that baby has nothing in common with you or me. I'm the reason why it's a big zero on that piece of paper. Is that what you're trying to say? I'm the one who put my, mm, Lord Jesus, hope. Oh, Lord, let me hold my peace. Boy, listen. Grow up and be a man. Face the fact. And just go ahead and move. Move on with your life, boy. Move on. That is not your child. That is not my grandchild. The power of the coochie is real. <laughs> this man is lost in the freaking sauce. Sir, you have to move on at this point. If you find out it's not your baby and you're trying to gaslight your mom into saying it's her fault, bro, what are you even talking about? You got to grow up. This is why I say us as men, we have to be the first ones on the front lines to take accountability for any of this stuff. We have to be because the sympathetic is real and us as men, we hold each other accountable and women typically do not. So we have to sit there and say, you know what, man, you're really out of pocket. You're over here charging your mom up about this stuff. She's right. You need to grow up. You need to be a man. I'm sorry, but if you're bucking with a girl and you're raising a kid that's not yours, I'm sorry, but that's not cool. That's really not cool. So go out there and get you another woman, especially if she was comfortable enough to be sleeping behind your back and had another kid and then it convinced you and, and she knew that you'd be stupid enough to raise this kid? Like, come on, bro. This is sad. This is a harsh reality, though. A lot, I feel like a lot of men run into this. The $10,000, keep it. Keep it. Keep it. Wow. You went in over the man is anyways because as soon as my, I was born, what did Pops do? He left. He left you and he left me. So how did you know what a good man is? Oh, and Lord. Here's another Jesus. thing. I, I mean, he's got a point there, but there's no reason to move the goalpost in this regard. This is what he's trying to do. This is what women do all the time. They move the goalpost, right? The argument's about the child right now and the fact that he needs to step up, and he's moving the goalpost to be like, well, well, you, you, you dad left you, and me, 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 me. But the, here's the whole, here's the, 
here's the foundational argument that I think he's trying to get across is like women complain about men not being men, not being chivalrous and not being masculine. But the thing is, is what's so sus about it all is that a lot of these men are raised by single mothers. So if that's the case, whose fault is it that these men aren't really masculine and they're not men? I'm just saying, don't shoot the messenger here. I don't make the rules, I just enforce them. But if women are getting mad at men not being man, man enough, but then 70% of the men that are raised by single mothers are degenerates, druggies, and criminals, whose fault is it really? I mean, I'll, I say us men, we should take accountability for it and say, hey, you know what? Shouldn't be busting in these women that we're not taking serious. I think we should marry before we carry. I think we should have a good relationship before we bring a child into this world. But on the other side of the coin, women are smart enough to know <laughs> there's a big risk when you crack your legs for a stupid man. <laughs> so if you're going to crack your legs and let this dude blow his cheese all inside of you and straight realign your spine and make a deposit in your body and you have the risk of creating another human, I mean, at the end of the day, if you're both consenting adults, he's pretty stupid, but so are you. It's a 50-50. It takes two to tango, as my mom would say when I was younger. It takes two to tango. So if you're dumb enough to let this man, you know, blow his seed in you, you got to be able to take the, uh, the repercussions, which is having a child. If you're not ready for that, don't be out there having unprotected sex. Just don't do it. It's really simple. Put on a Jimmy hat. Really not that hard. I mean, I'm pretty sure they teach that in middle school, don't they? Aren't they teaching that in middle school these days? I think, I think we learned it in middle school. But the whole thing is, is these single moms are the ones perpetuating these men that aren't masculine because they're raised by single moms. These single moms can't keep men in their life. Therefore, there's no man, there's no male figure. But the men are also leaving. The nuclear family has been broken up completely, and we did it. It's our fault. It's men and women's fault. It's not anybody else's fault. So we both have to take accountability. This, I know you ain't going there. Let me tell you something. Your daddy was Yes, he was. He was. Yes, he was. Yes, you know what? You know what? Sometimes the apple don't fall that far from the tree. You understand me? No, no. So listen to me. You know what? Take it from my side of the family. Well, do what you got to do. Face the fact and just move on. You know what? To be mad at me. So be mad. That's what you need to do. No. You need to ask her. Well, he need to go get with his girl. I don't know why you yelling at your mama, man. This is. I would never do this and never stoop down to their level. Be yelling and stuff. Like, come on, bro. I'm just her. That's the question. You all up in my face. Getting in the face of your so-called woman. She's not even a woman. A woman is somebody you can trust. A woman, when you do a DNA test, it'll be in the 99s, baby, not in the zeros. No, you can't trust me, but you know who you really can trust? That. I can't trust nothing about you. Okay. I'm the Okay. Do that. And I'm leaving, mama. After today, do not contact me no more. I don't want to hear from you. I don't, I don't want nothing to do with you no more. And that's on everything. That's on God. Well, you know what? You go ahead. Go ahead. Leave me. Leave. But on your Is way. Is this an acting audition? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It just seems like. Is he trying to be in the next Marvel movie? I don't know. Yeah, I'll pick up some fishing needle. Uh, mandatory paternity test in the early 90s. Frank Hartley agreed to pay child support for a boy he believed to be his son in 2000. He provided DNA evidence that his child was not his. The courts terminated his current support but found out that he still owed the errors for the child from 2008 uh, to 09. Mr. Hartley was incarcerated for 13 months for failure to pay towards these errors. What? Bro, that's wild to me. Let me tell y'all something, man. My parents split up when I was 11. <laughs> Single mom. <laughs> no, I was raised by a single mom, though, for real. For real, though, my dildo. Um, but yeah, my parents split up when I was 11. I remember they sat me in the back of the car and they said, Hey, Levi, we're getting a divorce. And I was like, what in the H-E double hockey sticks is a divorce? And they're like, oh, we're splitting up. And at that time, on the inside, I was shouting from the rooftops going, yippee, because it was a very toxic relationship. My dad was a drug user, very abusive to my mom physically, and it was just something that I didn't really want to be around. But once they split up, the dynamic changed. I did not have that masculine figure in the home anymore that I feared. And let me know what you guys think in the comments. Do you think it's good to have someone in the household like a father figure to fear? Do you think fear is good in a home? I don't know. 
My parents were raised around that, right? They always knew you need to fear your dad. Dad's got that iron claw. He can lay down the law if he really needs to. And I think that's something that we've lost over these last few generations. Since there's no fear in the house. Kids, I, I see millennial dads now get disrespected so much by these little kids and they don't do anything about it. They don't discipline them. They don't do anything to make them learn from their mistakes. They're just like, it's okay, little Timmy. We'll just take your iPad away from you. And to me, that's the problem. And the kids are also addicted to screens. But let's go back, right? Divorced at 11, and then it was just me and my mom. I eventually started to get into trouble because I had no fear of anything that was going to go on. I was bigger than my mom. What was she going to do? Spank me? I wasn't afraid of that. The physical violence side of things when it came to being reprimanded, I wasn't, I wasn't even afraid of. So as I moved on through life, I thought I was untouchable. And then I get to college and things like that. I get in some trouble. I won't get into that, but I'll just let you guys know, I, I wasn't a squeaky clean kid. I wasn't always wearing suits and crushed velvet turtlenecks. That wasn't always me. I had to learn the hard way that I was very much so vulnerable to the law. So it is what it is and it ain't what it ain't. So that's you know definitely in the past. But at the same time, if I would have had a father figure in my household at that time growing up through those years of adolescence, 11 to 15, 15 to 19, 20 and on, maybe I would have been a little bit better off. You know what I mean? Maybe I would have thought that, oh, I could get in trouble. But a lot of those things that as far as masculine traits, I wasn't taught as a kid. I had to go out and learn it from my grandfather or learn it from other guys' dads. And, and you know, at the end of the day, your grandfather's not going to reprimand you like your dad would, and your friend's dads aren't going to reprimand, reprimand you or hold you accountable like your dad would. You know, the, in my opinion, the dad's supposed to keep up with the pride of the family, the pride, the morality, the ethics, the work ethic, things like that. A, a man's supposed to do that. Let me know in the comments. Do you believe that there's something to do with having a father in the household that holds up some type of that pride for the family? Personally, I think so. Now, on the other side, I think a woman is supposed to keep up with the culture of the family. A lot of the ethics of the family, the kindness of the family, the camaraderie of the family, the trips, making sure everybody's good, the mediator of the family, making sure everybody's happy, everybody's taken care of, the one that's like always trying to nurture the environment to make sure everything's positive. The dad's supposed to be the negative one. That's what it is, right? And I feel like we've missed that. And now women would rather marry the government. We've we, Well, basically, we've subsidized single motherhood because now women would rather marry the government than they would some marry and submit to a man. And a lot of women nowadays would rather submit to their boss than they would submit to a man. Submission has such a negative connotation nowadays that women think that submitting to a man and being submissive to a man is a bad thing. In my opinion, it's a great thing. It's a good dynamic. There's followers and there's leaders. We can't all be leaders. I posted an episode months ago about when Bear Grylls did this show called The Island. If you've never seen it, you should definitely go check it out. But he held down, or he made this show, and it was 12 women on an island and 12 men on an island, and then they were deserted. After about like day three, the women are pretty much getting dysentery. <laughs> They're, they're like they're like falling over. They're they're dehydrated. They don't have enough water. You know, they had to like trap a pig in the show and then let them come up and like stab it. And it's like a pig like this freaking big. And the dudes are like out there like hunting alligators and fishing every night. And like dudes are gaining weight and the women are emaciated. Like, I'm so tired. I'm dying. But it's because us as men, we can understand how to go through a, a social hierarchy. It's like, I don't know what the study was done, but um, Saint in the Center talks about this. When boys are left to unstructured play, they create a hierarchy. There's a leader, and then there's captains, and then there's guys under them, right? And then when women are left to unstructured play, when, they're, when conflict comes up, they just stop playing. With as with boys, when conflict comes up, they go, they go back to the hierarchy. What does the leader say? What does the captain say? Okay, let's mediate that. Let's mitigate the, the conflict. All right, let's get back to it. Let's have conflict resolution and get back into the game. Girls would just stop playing entirely and just be like, hmm, because they can't form that, that hierarchy of people of like, okay, you have this role, you have this role. And then in that episode of the Bear Grylls, the island show, like the women are trying to set up leadership and they're all like, I think everyone should be equitable. I think we should all be equal and all have equal say. Well, you know what happens when you do that? Nothing ever gets done. There needs to be a leader. It's just like in companies. There needs to be somebody that's the source of truth that says yay or nay. Here's the line in the sand. It's black and white because if you don't have that, people are going to be like, well, I don't know what to do. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's why I think a man should lead in his family and a woman should follow. It's biologically, instinctually our nature. Men lead, women follow, women are nurturers, men are hunter gatherers. It's just how it is. Why, why is that? Why is that so confusing to understand nowadays? Why, why have we lost our way? We really have, dude. It's crazy to me. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode, man. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Go cop the ebook, The Four Pillars of Personality Makes You Irresistible to Women and Respected by Men. Hope you guys enjoyed today's episode, man. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys tomorrow, man. Peace.